What's going on YouTube? We're back at it for another video. Today we'll be doing the part one to the Khalid guide walkthrough. Whichever you'd like to call it. Essentially we're going to be starting from the smoldering church over here. As we will be getting a uh, certain charm from as soon as we get to this point. But we'll be able to head down through the left portion of Khalid and make our way on through. In somewhat of a linear pattern. But we've got more than a few things to cover with this one. So let's get straight into it. Now once you make it to the smoldering church itself, you will be hit with an NPC uh, invasion fight. Pretty simple one in my opinion, but you will get a nice little charm out of it that will further increase your holy damage. So if you're a holy or faith build, working on that holy damage could be pretty benefit beneficial for you. Now once you get into the church, obviously there's going to be two of those cookbooks on the right. You want to grab those before grabbing the Lost Grace. And just behind it, over to our left, we're going to have another one of those Erd trees, or minor Erd trees. Much like the rest of them, there will be another one of those Erdtree Champions. Get up a couple of those, uh, what are they, Sacred Tears? Sacred te no, 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 not Sacred Tears. Crystal, Crystal Tears. Can't believe I'm missing that name out of nowhere. But this one will be an irritating one each time that you have to face one of these Erdtree Champions and they spit out that Scarlet Rot. It's just a frustrating fight altogether. But lucky enough, if you are quite leveled up by the time you make it to this, should be able to make quick-ish work with it. Now, I can't remember. I believe there's one other item over here just behind it. I believe it's going to be over on the right. Yeah, it'll be on this branch over here. What was it again? Maybe another one of those. Ah, it's going to be a cracked pot. Now, some of this gameplay footage will be a bit, uh, mm, how to call it, choppy in a way. Sadly enough, when I was having the internet issues... The bit rate was uh, pretty inconsistent, so there will be a bit of a frame issue here and there, but lucky enough, it will smooth out from time to time. But just beyond over to our right, we're going to find another one of those Lost Graces, let a little ghost to talk to, and we'll have another one of those butterflies to uh, pick up right there. Now over to our left, we'll have a little bit of that uh, Scarlet Rot consumable that will be able to get us, so, or give us the ability to take out that Scarlet Rot if we do get overwhelmed by it. Now, after grabbing that gold rune, we'll start heading along the main path itself. Essentially, we'll start to run into a rather large pack of zombies. I guess you could call it like the uh, herd from The Walking Dead. But they're a bit, uh, scarlet, scarlet ridden, I suppose. But in the middle of that main road, we are going to find one of those scarabs. Giving us a flame whip ability, I believe. And we're going to have a few chickens over here and some of these puppy T-Rexes. or T-Rex puppies, whichever way you'd like to call it. But those giant chickens, or uh, ravens, if you will, going to be very frustrating like they always have been. God, they're still a nuisance, even at a higher level. But in the back of this broken down carriage, we will get a very unique weapon that is going to be a greatsword. Or that's essentially what it's called. I believe it's a legendary weapon. Even though it doesn't show up as one. It's going to be one of those that's a reference to the uh, anime Berserk. If you know anything about that, I know there's uh, apparently more than a few references to it. I've only seen a little bit of the anime myself, but it was pretty solid from what I have saw. But this weapon is apparently from that anime, from the main character's hand, and uh, even at level 1. I mean, it's making quick work out of these T-Rex puppies. But I did end up going out and leveling this up quite a bit. have been using this since. It's been a good bit of fun, but it can be a bit slow. But if you're rolling with a full-on strength build, going to be very powerful. Now we'll head back to the Lost Grace that we just grabbed. Don't jump over the edge. It's going to be, uh, sadly enough, one of those spots where you can die. But we'll be heading along the right path, essentially going straight past uh, where we just picked up that great sword. reason I uh, portaled us back to that uh, last Lost Grace is because I definitely wanted to level this weapon up, really get the most out of it, and it, it's got uh, quite the swing when it comes down to taking down some of these enemies and it can stagger even some of the bosses fairly quickly even in new game plus as I've been playing through using this weapon it has been quite nice for the strength build but at the same time the one drawback is it is a bit slow when it comes to the swings but if you've got high enough poise with this some of those talismans to help out with that it's going to be a huge help so you'll notice it took down that chicken quite quickly now, even at this point, I don't believe I had it fully leveled up, but we'll have some ruins over here that we'll need to go through, and there's going to be more than a few of those giant chickens. Very irritating, but ooh, look at that great sword just putting in the work. Now, over here on our left, we will have another one of those smithing stones. 
And before we uh, progress out of this area, there's going to be a Stone Sword Key Ruins area over here in the back that we passed a few minutes ago, a few seconds ago, I should say, that we'll need to head on down into. Nick Stevens, hey, appreciate it, man. Now inside here, I'm trying to remember, we'll have a uh, unique weapon. What is that, the sound of a uh, sword? It's going to have some decent magic damage. It's got some blood loss to it. If you're somebody that is rolling around with that a uh, little bit of intellect, maybe doing the uh, melee slash caster type of build, could be a sword that you might want to look into. Especially for a uh, bit lower level, maybe you've just come out of uh, Limgrave, Limgrave, whatever you'd like to call it. But from that point, we'll start heading a little bit over to our right. We're going to have a dungeon over here that we'll need to get into. After I've uh, taken a good look around. But over here on this hilltop, we will have a graveyard full of some of those uh, golden runes. you want to pick those up as you go and buy. Never can have too many of those, or never enough of the runes in general. Especially if you've had one of those moments where whew, you've lost quite the uh, hefty amount. Need a little bit just to upgrade that next weapon or get something out of one of those vendors. Comes in handy more than a few times. But just over the cliffside, we'll have a little area. This is going to be the dungeon itself. We'll be able to go down in here into the Gale Tunnel. I believe that's the name of it. And I will need to jump down over to the left. It's going to be a cup or just before that as well. I have one more item to grab up, which is going to be a somber smithing stone. We'll still have another couple of ledges to drop on down. Do be sure to be uh, on the lookout or looking down for when you need to get down there. Or where you're going, I should say. But from that point, we'll be able to grab up that Lost Grace. We'll have more than a few smithing stones down here to grab up as well. And what's going to be nice about this area is, you know, we'll notice uh, more than a few of the, some of those level 1, level 2, level 3. It's going to be uh, perfect for some of those people that are trying to get some of those other weapons leveled up. Or maybe you have more than 3 or 4. You're still going to need those level 1, 2s, and 3s just to get some of those weapons maxed, leveled. You know, if you're trying trying out different builds, constantly re and just looking to have that... Uh, bit of diversity when it comes to your character. It's definitely going to be useful for some of those moments. But we'll also have another one of those smithing stones on the right. Do be on the lookout for each one's on these uh, hanging walls, or on the sides of the walls. And we'll still have those uh, type of crystal enemies. That blunt force is going to be uh, a bit frustrating. Sadly enough, there is going to be no illusionary walls inside of here. Did uh, have a good look around. Pretty much hit whew, way too many of the walls, and you'll see it in a bit of this gameplay. Hello, I'm mute. Hey, appreciate it, man. We'll have a somber smithing stone over on the right, and we will have a, uh, I believe this is a spear type weapon. Something that gives blood loss. Don't know whether or not it's going to be that useful for you, but I will say most of the weapons inside of uh, this game, even if they are something that doesn't really have. Too much of a special attribute to it. You can make it pretty useful as long as you level it up. Kind of give it the right stats. Boost it from your attributes. Any one of them could really work out quite well. There's just going to be a whole lot of them that are just absolutely broken. Like this great sword. But down here, we'll also have another one of those smithing stones over on our left. I'll put the grab that here in a second. After I've, uh, you know, gotten trolled. Wait, did I not grab that? Okay, well, I didn't grab it. Hmm. Well, there's going to be one back there on the left that you'll need to grab. Sometimes they just blend in way too well. But over here on the right, it's going to be the boss fight. It's going to be one of those magma magma dragons, but you'll see the greatsword right now. Just, uh, ooh, man, that uppercut that it has, that left trigger and then right trigger, ho, oh. It just puts them down. Even in New Game Plus, I was quite shocked at how uh, strong this weapon can be. But from this bo boss, we will get the uh, Moon Veil. I've seen more than a few videos on this weapon. Apparently, it's pretty powerful, pretty broken. You know, if you can dual wield it, grab it up in the uh, New Game Plus and dual wield that. Apparently, it is uh, extremely powerful. Apparently, they nerfed it as well in one of these uh, updates or patches recently. But... From what I've seen, it's still apparently knocking them out of the park. Now, from that point, we'll be out in Limegrave. I'll be covering this area in the Limegrave uh, or Limgrave uh, 
what am I trying to say, Limgrave guide that will be coming out later this week. But from that point, we'll be heading back to that same Lost Grace point that we just uh, headed back to earlier. And then we'll be kind of going along the left side this time, or pushing down further to the right first. Now that I think about it, we will be coming back to that Lost Grace a little bit later on, but we've got a smaller castle that we need to head over to before we uh, double back onto the left side. Now, after I have uh, taken a little bit of fun just uh, destroying those guys with the greatsword. Now, I will say the greatsword is better on foot. When you're on horseback, it's it's pretty slow to swing. I mean, it's devastating towards a lot of the enemies, and you can make quick work of uh, a lot of the common type enemies pretty fast. Goodness. Ah, that's right. In this area, we will have a trying to think of uh, the name of it. One of those invisible scarabs that just keeps running around. That's why the gameplay footage is extremely sped up right now because I had a very frustrating time. Do use some type of weapon that is, you know, not exactly as slow as the greatsword because the timing with the greatsword on hitting some of these invisible scarabs can be, whew, let's just say it is extremely frustrating to try and have to deal with that. But after we've taken down that scarab, we will be heading over to the right. There's going to be a couple of these uh, flame, flaming head guys. Not the uh, hardest to defeat, but still can be extremely irritating to deal with. But there's going to be more than a few archers over here, and as we progress through, you'll notice there's going to be uh, a lot more of those uh, flame-type enemies up as we go through here. would highly suggest just getting on horseback, just dealing with them as quick as possible. And there will be something uh, similar to the magical trap that we had over at uh, Carrier Manor, if you've already dealt with that as you were coming up to the uh, manor itself. This one will be very similar to uh, Radon's ability where he shoots up the arrows and they come raining down in front of you. This will continuously keep popping up or trying to attack you essentially the whole time that you're pushing forward. I would say the best bet is to just... Go straight up to the castle. You know, you could deal with all of these one at a time, especially if you're a bit lower level. You just got into this area. Just trying to increase some of that uh, ruin game. If you take one of those pickled chicken's feet, you should be able to make a pretty decent amount of change when it comes to ruins from some of these, uh, or all of these enemies that'll be in this area. But here coming up in a minute... It's another one of those moments where I started to notice that the uh, bit rate was going down. Took a bit of uh, time to try and check on the stream. Sadly, that's why it uh, gets a bit slow in these portions right here. But, essentially what we're going to be doing is just heading up towards that castle. As you'll notice, uh, since we've gotten a bit closer, the arrows raining down has uh, slowed down. But there will be one of those health scarabs over here. And as soon as we get up to the top, we're going to want to go over to the left there's going to be two of those uh, wheelie head flames that are going to be over here. And in between them is actually going to be another flame type ability. Some type of incantation. I believe it may possibly be, be, be face, faith based. Goodness, some of those, uh, those words just blended together. Now we won't be able to go through the main gate, but we'll need to head over to the right side. Cross some of those branches and there'll be a uh, ladder on our left. Be a bit of a tightrope walking up on top of here, but we'll have more than a few, uh, or a couple of items to grab up on top of here. We'll head up to the ladder, or stairs over here. We'll have a couple of enemies, including one of those knights, but hmm, that greatsword. Let's just batter up with that special ability on it. Now we will have a chest on top of here, over on the right side, underneath one of those uh, kind of makeshift tents. And I believe inside of there we will have another one of those heirlooms, which is going to... Uh, can't remember what exactly it increases, but I believe it raises our stamina possibly. But there'll also be a tower over here on our left that we will have a portal in front of us, or at the top of it. This is not necessary uh, to go through unless you're trying to get immediately over to uh, Castle Redmain, but we've got a few things that we need to grab before we even uh, take that, or if you're choosing to take that in order to get to Redmain as quick as possible. Now you notice we do have a lion down below. And you can jump down from uh, the left side of that staircase and just in the back room we're going to have another weapon that we can grab up which is going to be, I uh, can't remember the name of it, but it's a fist, fist type of weapon. 
Now, this could be good for some of those people that are trying to go for those fist weapons, possibly dual wielding. It doesn't really have much uh, to it that really gives it anything special, but could be something nice to throw on that left hand if you already have a decent fist weapon in the right hand, don't have anything else, and you're just trying to dual wield it. But after we kill this lion, we will get an Ash of War ability off of him and over to our right, leave, uh, what was it, getting another rune arc. Now from this point, we can't open that main gate just yet, but over on our left, left close to where we uh, got up on top of the uh, top of this castle before, it's going to be a ladder over here, and we'll need to circle back around to that staircase over there in the back. Uh, do be mindful there is a, a jump right there. Would hate to have to go back up that ladder all the way again. But over here on our left is where we can jump across. I believe there will be one item over to our right, which is going to be a mushroom. Kind of useless, but you can never have too much of those crafting material. Now from that point, we'll be able to open up that uh, main gate. We'll be able to jump down, head back over on top of uh, that tower, and just going to showcase that the portal, or show where the portal takes us, essentially, from this point. And it's going to basically put us across the bridge right in front of the castle red main. Could be useful for some of those people that are just trying to get there as quick as possible. Maybe if you're going through New Game Plus, you could really skip some land in that point and just get straight over to the Radon fight if you wanted to, or just get the Lost Graces inside of there. Not have to deal with anything. But from that point, we're going to head all the way back to that first Lost Grace that we had again. And this time, we're going to be kind of Heading over to the left side, grabbing up a couple more of those Lost Graces over here. As you'll notice along the main path, over here on the left, we'll have another Lost Grace to grab up. And over on our right, right here, there is going to be a, a bit of ruins. It's going to be a, a flame ruins. You'll notice this first portion is all about flame, and then the rest of it's going to be more towards the Scarlet Rod side of things. We'll have a couple of those uh, Weedly Flame heads over here as well, but more than a few of these explosive zombie types, much like the heard that we saw earlier but for whatever reason they're going to be uh, each one of these flaming piles or what looks like campfires is actually a, a massive group of them in a way you'll notice it here in a moment over here on our right you know it, it looks like it's a flaming pile but it's, it's it's a pile of them just flaming but if you let them uh, get to charging you this could be a devastating moment they will explode they've got that ticking time bomb feel to them but over here in this back left, we've got another one of those, uh, not even sure what to call it. Look at that great sword just taking him out one swing. We'll have a little mini boss fight inside of here, which is going to be two of those uh, pumpkin heads. That great sword is just uh, making quick work of pretty much every enemy from this point going forward. But just in the back here, we have a unique shield to grab up inside of here, which is just pretty much going to be exactly like those fleely, ugh, wheely flame heads. Goodness. And I wish I knew the actual name for them, because it's probably a bit easier to say. But with this shield, we'll actually be able to use the same ability that they have to kind of spit fire. Could be useful for some of those people that are using shields. Could be an interesting combination. Kind of get some of that stagger ability from that flame spitting out. But it will take up uh, or utilize our FP in order to cast that. But from that point, we'll start heading a little bit over to the right. You'll notice we've got these little scarlet rot coral beds all over the place. But then we'll be doubling back to the left as there's something we need to grab up before we head any further down into this. You'll notice we're getting close to the uh, kind of crack along the middle portion. This is going to be something that kind of divides us from uh, the northern portion of Khalid itself. But there's a spot at the very top, just off to the east, that we'll be able to jump across, grab up the map for this area, and get the Divine Tower. That way we've got the Lost Grace for this area, but there's also a secret hidden boss inside of this Divine Tower that is quite the tanky boy, but you'll see that coming up here in a bit. But over here, this is going to be the spot where we're able to jump across, and then just up ahead on this little main path right here on our right, it's going to be that Lost Grace. From this point, if we start heading a little bit over to our left, we're going to have a shack up on top of here. Just showing you uh, the location on the map. need to do that a bit more often in some of these guides. I'm trying to do that uh, as we progress through some of these guides or as I make uh, further ones going forward. Just to make it a bit easier for people to understand where some of these items are. And I've had some people complain about it down in the comments, but we'll get to that here in a bit. 
But over back here on the top of this little uh, cliff side, we'll have one of those vendors. And this is going to be one of those spots where you can also come back at nighttime. You can sit at that Lost Grace, wait until nighttime or past time until it sit back again at that Lost Grace and be able to face off with uh, the nighttime boss in that area. But just over to the right back portion of that, just over that little small rock, we'll have another one of those Ash of Wars from those scarabs. I believe this guy had... Yes, he's got the Fog of War that you want to grab up, and the Cracked Pot could be useful for you. Maybe a couple of those Bloody Fingers if you wanted to. Now, I did end up buying this Beast Repellent Torch. Trust me, it's a false advertisement. You'll see here in a moment this thing does... Uh, it does not repel Beast at all. I put it on, immediately thinking, you know, it repels the Rams, but, uh, you know, Puppy T-Rex looks like it's a Beast. Does not work, trust me. It's not going to be a fun time. Don't waste your money on him. Not worthwhile. That lantern is going to be all the light you need. But right after that, we'll start doubling back as there's nothing else that we'll need to grab up on top of here. We'll start heading towards the Divine Tower on our left. Don't believe there's going to be any items on the right. This is just me kind of uh, making sure there was nothing over there. Seeing if there was any uh, goodies we could possibly grab up. But we'll head back towards the Divine Tower and... At this point, this is going to be one of those moments where we're going to need to jump over onto some branches. But before we do that, I believe this is where I uh, implemented it. Yes, we'll need to double back. And we'll need to grab the map for this location. It's just going to be right here over on our right. Not too far away. And then we'll just double back to that Divine Tower. That way we've got this uh, completely covered as we'll... Be doubling back to the location that we just came from after we get done with this Divine Tower. Now with this Divine Tower, we're not going to be able to go in like we would with uh, any of the other ones. There's not going to be any main entrance when it comes to the bottom of this. Now, there is a couple of items that are down there, but we'll get to that after we've entered the in or entered inside of the Divine Tower. Gotten everything that we need, especially the Lost Graces, in order to have this for later on after we've finished off or done. Able to activate one of those great runes. But we'll essentially need to be riding the uh, ledge over here on our right. We're going to have one item to grab up, which is going to be one of those stone sword keys. But you'll notice that we're going to need to keep heading on up. This is going to be how we get inside of the Divine Tower itself, as well as gaining access to that secret boss that's just underneath it, or at the bottom of it, essentially. Now, there's going to be a couple of spots where it doesn't look like you're going to be able to make that jump, but trust me, if you're just doing that sprint jump, you'll be able to make it across. And whew, I tell you right now, this ladder right here is way too close to that ledge. Whoever designed this one, you know, they, they had no fear in mind in there. Whew. I tell you right now, I would not be wanting to go up on top of that ladder. But from that point, we'll be able to head up to the, or grab up that Lost Graze now in this next room. Do be careful. Maybe you've seen uh, Dr. Disrespect's stream. Because uh, I know he got stuck here for about two hours just dealing with these two knights. And shockingly enough, they did actually uh, get me the first time in. But not after that one time. Now, there will be a door on our left right here. Trust me, don't even worry about that door. It's it's not even worthwhile to get it open. I spent an extra 30 minutes figuring out how to get up to it. And there was just one ladder that I'd missed in order to grab it up. And it, it there's no items behind it. And it really doesn't create... A solid shortcut for you it's just kind of useless in my opinion I was quite irritated by the time I found it but from this point we'll need to head along the edge and head over to the right as we're gonna need to jump down on this what seems like it's about to break little uh, bridge right here and it will break on us but from that point we'll be able to head forward and over to our left or or possibly right you'll notice that there's a spot that or ledge that we can jump down to from there now, on our right side is going to be a small platform that we can jump down to. Do be careful right here. Trust me, I, I've had more than a few uh, missteps down here, so do your best to kind of line up some of those jumps, especially in moments like that where it seems like you landed it perfectly, but, you know, it's a bit greased apparently, so you, you just keep sliding off the over the, uh, the side of it. Now, there's going to be nothing over on our right side, sadly enough, but we'll need to take that lift. I believe it takes us up to some uh, type of hallways that we'll be able to get in through. Essentially, you've already seen it. You'll notice there was a bit of an open area as we fell down from one of those uh, broken walkways. We'll be heading up into that area through this lift, so don't worry about uh, 
trying to find if that was a secret or something you could jump over to, trust me. We'll be uh, right at it, or right in that area up here. Now, we'll be a couple of those uh, Godskin Warriors through here, but at the other end, we'll also find another one of those Rune Arcs. Then we'll just need to keep progressing forward until we make it over into a uh, another one of those little walkways that's going to break underneath us. And once you jump down onto this broken uh, walkway, it may look like you're going to die, but trust me, somehow, uh, <laughs> by whatever means, we're able to survive that type of fall compared to the much smaller falls that apparently cause instant death. But we'll also find a Lost Graze down here, as well as another one of those gods getting uh, apostles. But there'll actually be another one that is going to be a boss fight that we'll have to deal with. I actually had to switch up my weapon for this one. had to end up uh, trading back to the Bloodhound Fang because... With the great sword, it's got a slower swing, and this guy's a bit more in your face, a bit more aggressive. He's got a multitude of attacks, and he's got those quick swings with it, so I needed something that gave me a bit more agility and a quicker swing time as well. Plus, he's a bit tanky, even with that great sword max leveled. It wasn't quite doing the amount of damage I would have liked to, or at least eaten away at him, compared to the amount of damage I was dealing back to myself from just having that slow swing. So the Bloodhound Fang would be... Uh, Rather nice for this or any type of weapon that's going to have a quicker swing, quicker attack time. Considering he is quite tanky, we're going to need to back up and then move back in against him. He's got a couple of moves that once you're right there in his face, he's going to be able to slice you up more than a few times. So you're going to need to be able to come out of that swing a lot quicker to avoid some of those attacks he may be uh, dealing towards you. And as you'll notice, he'll have a bit of that Mr. Fantastic uh, stretchiness to him, much similar to... Uh, some of those uh, lizard guys we phased off in the Volcano Manor, if you've already been down that way. But after we take him down, we'll also get his armor set, as well as a, uh, I believe it's the Godslayer's Greatsword. This one's going to have fire damage to it. I believe, bleh, believe I've seen a couple of uh, videos that saying that this is pretty solid for PvP. Could be a solid weapon as well for the PvE portion, but it's another one of those legendary weapons that's just going to be a little bit overpowered. Now, once we uh, take that portal back outside, we'll be able to kind of jump down over to the left, get to the bottom of the Divine Tower itself. It's going to be a couple of items we'll want to grab up down here. We've got a, uh, you know, Knights of the Round Table feel without the table. It's going to give us a rune arc, a couple of consumables, and that somber smithing stone. Now, I'm trying to remember if there was anything on the back side of this. I don't believe so, so from this point we'll need to head back to... Uh, the top of the Divine Tower if you have finished off uh, Radon fight already if you have his great rune from that Lost Grace if we go right instead of to the left we'll be able to head up to the top portion of this and activate that great rune as you notice we'll have that very similar doorway that essentially is what should have been the uh, main one at the bottom like with the other uh, Divine Towers but we'll be able to take this lift up after I've uh, taken a good long look at this what? Why did I leave that in here? Goodness. Sometimes my editing is uh, quite poor in some of these moments. But once we take that lift up, we'll be able to activate the Great Rune from Radon. And, quite simply, if you haven't done it already, you've got that Lost Grace, so you can come back at any time and activate this. That's why we've gotten this done before we headed down towards the uh, Red Main Castle area. But that's going to further improve our, I believe, HP, FP, stamina as well. Just give us a great increase to that if you're using that great rune. Now we'll need to head back to that Lost Graze just off to uh, the left of those uh, ruins that we found that flame shield from. And from this point, we'll need to head back along that coral area. Now up here on top of here, there's going to be a bird that's kind of hanging over an item. It's just going to be a consumable, or no, I don't believe it's consumable. I believe it's a uh, crafting material. You notice we got that one shot with that great sword. It's going to be that Scarlet uh, scarlet Bud. If you haven't gathered any of that recently, this could be helpful for crafting some of those consumables to take away the Scarlet Rot. Might be something you want to grab up. We'll start heading along the left edge towards that uh, little crack that we see on the ground. It's going to be one of those Virgin Robots over here. We'll take that down quite quickly with that Greatsword. Ooh. But back here, there's going to be a branch that we can jump on top of that's going to lead us over to a uh, type of secret cave, essentially. Definitely something you could overlook very easily. But down inside of here, we've got a boss that's going to give us a unique type of uh, talisman. Now, there's more than a good bit of uh, Scarlet Rot down here. It's, it's 
it's going to be none of those uh, virgin robots. It's just going to be a lot of uh, dead bodies of them, essentially, just kind of decaying down here. But over to our right, we're going to be able to grab up one of those dragon grease consumables. Could be great for any of those moments when you're facing off with a dragon. Give you that little bit of added damage that just makes that fight go a bit quicker for you. But over to the left, we'll be able to grab up... Uh, there's going to be a couple of... Uh, we'll have a bow to grab up over here, but these... Uh, I can't remember the name. We've got the serpent bow right here. Not sure how great this bow may be for some of those uh, players out there, but for whatever reason, it utilizes uh, arcane as uh, something that can strengthen it. Might be something uh, of use to some of those uh, caster builds out there that may want to use a bow. Not sure exactly. But over here on the left side, we've got a bit more of that uh, flame grease. Back inside of here, we will have one of those giant flowers. You will want to take this out, but head over to the right first as we've got some of those fungal enemies that's going to throw some of that poison at us. There's nothing worse than having maximum poison and scarlet right on top of you. Very frustrating right there. But we'll need to take out that flower as just behind that flower is the spot that we'll need to jump up on top of and grab up another item. I'm trying to remember what it was. I believe it's... Some type of fist weapon, which is going to be the Venomous Fang, that's right. This one's going to cause uh, poison buildup with any one of their swings. has a decent uh, special ability as well. It's kind of similar to the uh, Bloodhound Step, but without the uh, teleporting ability. It just kind of slides forward. Could be useful for some of those moments where you're just trying to close in on the enemy, try to avoid their damage, and just uh, start wailing them with that Poisonous Fang. But just beyond that, we're going to have the boss fight in here, which is going to be two Scarlet uh, or Clean Rot Knights. For me personally, these guys are pretty easy. They can be very frustrating when it comes to their charge attacks and some of their ranged abilities with those uh, spears that they have. But once we've taken out both of these guys, very easy to stun lock them. We'll get the Golden Scarab, which is going to further increase the rune amount that we'll get from killing any one of the uh, enemies. This is something that would be perfect for something to grab early on. Kind of wish I had found this uh, earlier, as it'll just give you that added boost to uh, possibly gathering more runes as you're clearing in the early portion of this and just getting those levels a good bit faster than you would have previously, especially when you don't have all the talismans necessary for your build at that time. This would be one of those that'd be perfect to slot in, just to give you that added boost. But from that point, we'll start heading along the left portion of this, uh, or left little cliff side. We'll have a couple of enemies to deal with. Don't necessarily have to deal with them, though. If you've already got the runes, you've already got the levels, don't even really worry about it. But just over to our right, we're going to find another one of those Lost Graces. Grab that up real quick, and there'll be the, uh, the Finger Lady over there that you can talk to now. Yeah, this is just another one of those moments in the gameplay footage, just trying to keep everybody on track. We won't necessarily need to go back that way, but we'll start heading along this main path over here after I've done a good bit of sidetracking. But over here, along the left edge, as we go around the swamp, we're not going to go into the swamp just yet. That's going to be a part of uh, part two, essentially. We'll be going around the outer edge of it, because if I jump down into that just now, we'd already be missing the uh, southern portion, especially around the area of... Uh, goodness, I do a lot of wandering here. But as we go along the uh, edge of that swamp, we'll find another vendor. Now, it really doesn't have much to offer, but you could buy up some of those consumables that'll take away that scarlet rot but beyond that the arrows are pretty much the only thing of real value out of this vendor sadly enough but once we're done with that guy we'll start heading over to the right just a bit pretty much right underneath where that uh or that smaller castle was or a little bit over to the left we're gonna be dealing with a, a bit more of those prawns sadly enough now i've had to speed up this portion i was having a good little chat with uh chat in stream but at the same time just kind of having a looky-loo moment where just kind of looking around making sure that I'm not missing anything could hear one of those scarabs around here but couldn't quite find it just yet we'll get to that here in a moment it is just across the road but over here on the left just down below that uh that castle or mini castle it's going to be another one of those pumpkin heads with a couple of fire enemies around him do be careful with those if they all start spitting that fire it's a horrifying and frustrating uh stun lock moment but just up above us there's going to be a little ledge that looks like we could jump up onto it but can't jump up from that side over to the right we'll be able to get up there and there's going to be another one of those somber smithing stones up top 
Now you'll notice we're just below that uh, mini castle up there, but we'll need to head back down. We'll need to head across the uh, main street or uh, main path on our left here in a moment. After I've had a nice little uh, look around, I think there's one item down here. A little bit of that crafting material just inside. Now if you're on the horse inside of the Scarlet Rod area, lucky enough, you'll uh, be able to avoid that Scarlet Rod buildup. But as soon as you come down off of it, obviously you're going to start taking it. But, like I said before, there's going to be a scare over across the uh, main road itself. And then over to our left, next to all those uh, swords sticking out of the ground. We also had that uh, Lost Grace over there. Then we'll be able to head over to these broken down ruins over here where there's going to be more than a few of those prawns. Goodness, even at a higher level, still going to be a frustrating mess to uh, deal with. But there's a couple of items that we need over here. But before we uh, head deeper inside of these ruins, we need to head over to the right as there's going to be a... Uh, what is it? Uh, a little dungeon that we'll need to explore through. That we'll be getting to here in a moment after I've taken care of some of these prawns. It feels nice to one-shot them with that greatsword. It is, uh, it is just home running every single one of them with that ability. Now as we come down through here, there will be uh, one little cave down here. And now inside here might be a good idea to throw on that lantern before you head down. It's pretty dark in here and there's going to be those uh, smaller prawns, the children of the prawns. That sounds pretty much like a fitting nightmare uh, horror movie right there that just seems... Uh, to fit very well inside of this dark dungeon but back here we grabbing up another type of sword or katana maybe i should say meteoric yeah it is going to be a katana this one i have magic damage and the blood loss couldn't use it so i'm not sure whether or not the uh the name actually means that it has some type of meteor uh, type of special ability for its left trigger but something to check out but from that point, we'll start heading over to the right as we're going to start heading closer to that dungeon, which is going to be a little bit deeper into the Scarlet Rod area, so you want to get back onto that horse and start pushing in. We'll need a Stone Sword key for this one. And then we'll be able to grab up the Lost Grace inside of here, and there's going to be a chest on our left side. Sadly enough, it's just going to be a rune arc. I mean, it's, uh, you know, I'm not complaining that we get one, but... You know, every time I see a chest, I, I'm always hoping for something that's going to be a unique item, something along those lines, something that's a bit more beneficial than the rune arc itself. But as we get in here, there's going to be more than a few of these uh, cage doors, barred doors. And you'll notice as we uh, progress a little bit further after the pitfall, there is going to be more than a few of these cells that have some of those explosive zombie types inside of them. What we're essentially going to need to do is kind of just push on through here and then we'll be able to hit a lever that opens up all of these doorways. I know for uh, some people you may get lost in here. I know I did the uh, first time going through and do be, uh, do be aware there's going to be some of those mini men, those little toy soldiers. They can be ooh, extremely frustrating. They throw that gas out. They get up right behind you, jump up on your shoulder. They can deal some... Heavy damage, but it is just irritating to deal with. You you want to take care of them as quick as possible, because they can get you stun locked pretty quickly. Especially if they just group up on you. But as we progress through here, we're also going to have a giant rat on, rat on our left. Then we'll have another gold rune and turtleneck over here. Then we'll progress forward. There's going to be a couple of gas traps up here. Do be aware of that. It's going to instantly cause that poison on you. So if you don't have any of those consumables ready to uh, alleviate that poison, do be aware that you will be having that constant uh, bleed effect from that poison. But over in this chest over here, we'll have another somber smithing stone and another gold rune on the left. Now up above, or before we go up above, we need to uh, open up that doorway that we can have that, uh, I guess like a open loop in this area. Instead of being, uh, or having to go through the entire area again, even though we're essentially going to need to do that just to go through and uh, get the loot that's going to be behind some of these uh, barred doors that we've just now opened. And do be sure to take out those explosive guys before they uh, trigger. Now, we get a little shield right there, but it's not, it's not anything too fancy. It is kind of funny because it is one of those... Uh, how would I call it? It's one of those things where they're uh, kept prisoner inside of it. Now from this point, we'll need to head back a little bit further, more towards the uh, 
area that we came in, as you'll notice, we'll grab up that gold rune. Uh, you know, I just talk and talk and talk for a bit. I probably should have edited that out, but another one of those moments. Now, from this point, you know, this is when I started to think, uh, I'm not sure where I'm going. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm uh, heading down the right path, but we'll need to jump down that ledge and then grab up all the loot that we had just come through. Essentially, we're going to do a giant circle and then come back to one of the doors that we had already been in through in that past room. Now, we will get a stone sword key and a katana out of this room, gold rune as well. Now, the katana, not the greatest one. We've obviously found some other ones that are pretty decent, but... If you didn't have a secondary katana at the very beginning, you're trying to dual wield katanas, could be a nice little uh, left hander right there. Now, from this point, we'll start heading back towards where we uh, got that lift at. Or not just yet. Almost forgot there's one room back here. Got a couple of gold runes in here. And we'll be able to open up this bag here. That's right. We won't be. Losing my train of thought here. That one that we opened up that had a path going up was going to go back out to the front. Uh, or the opening, essentially. But inside of this boss room, I mean, that great sword just makes quick work. I mean, it's unreal. If you've got a solid strength build going, it's just going to obliterate most of the bosses in this game and just about anything. Now, we will get a unique sword here with magic damage to it. Not sure whether or not it's one of those that's going to be uh, all-powerful when it comes to those magic builds. But... Could be something to use, something that if possibly you're doing uh, an intellect build that also uses uh, dual wielding for some type of bladed weapon. Could be useful for you. But we'll take that portal back out to the front of it and start heading back towards those ruins. We need to cut, ugh, grab a couple more things over here on the right. There's going to be uh, definitely a few more of those prawns to deal with, but if you've upgraded that greatsword, you're going to be making quick work of them. Now we'll have a bit of crafting material there in the back portion, and then we'll be able to jump up on the ledge over to our right, start heading along the uh, right cliff side over here. We'll get another uh, starlight shard over here. Now we will push a little bit over to the left here, as there's going to be a lost grace over here. We need to grab that up, that way we've got an even pattern of these. Now I started in kind of just exploring, seeing if there's anything I'm missing over here, but essentially we're going to start heading back over to the right as we're heading along the uh, edge of that cliffside. Now over here is going to be another one of those graveyards. Interesting thing about this one, there will be one of those giant ogres that randomly spawns. I don't know whether or not it's based on the fact if you kill all of these uh, smaller ghoulish guys, but if you do end up Basing off with this guy. Not too hard to defeat him, but when you do kill him, you'll actually get a larval tear out of him. Pretty solid for any of those uh, moments when you might need to respec. can never have too many of those larval tears, especially if you're trying to diversify the build, just kind of change up your character here and there. Maybe you wanted to change it over to a faith build, caster, whatever you'd like. Having more of them, just going to give you more of those options of diversity. And over here on our left, we're going to have a dragon-type church essentially. Now there will be a guy out front, you can take him out, but it's really no worries. But we'll also have another cookbook right there, grab up the Lost Grace, and at the same location, just like the, uh, I forget the name of that island, but the one where we're able to pay in to, uh, we'll also have a dragon over here. Well, we'll come back to that here in a moment, and I'll showcase what that is. Now this dragon's going to be a little bit unique compared to the other ones. It's going to be a Scarlet dr Rot Dragon. Me personally, this is the most frustrating dragon to deal with. I absolutely hate the Scarlet Rod buildup this guy can deal with. Uh, you know, I had an easier time with the Frostbite. If there was a Poison one, I'd imagine that one would be easier as well. And the Flames, you know, I'd just rather have them back. I'm glad there's only one dragon that I've had to deal with that has this Scarlet Rod on it. Because just having that constant dot, or that damage over time from the Scarlet Rod and for whatever reason, I had this moment where he just uh, sat up on top of the tree. But having that uh, damage over time from that Scarlet Rod at the same time as dealing with this dragon is absolutely frustrating. And any time that he sprays that Scarlet Rod just beneath him in the surrounding area in that little 360 radius, it's also dealing damage at the same time as causing that Scarlet Rod buildup. Or if you already have it maxed out and it's dealing that damage, 
It's just stacking on top of that. And it, I mean, I came close with this one. I think I exhausted all of my health pots with this. I had this weapon fully up. I mean, it was just a, a very frustrating fight to deal with. Arguably, if you're low level and you're coming through this area, I might say uh, just skip this dragon for now. He's not going to give you the ability to uh, buy up uh, a new type of dragon ability that has Scarlet Rot to it. Just going to be another one of those dragon hearts. Might be one of those that you just come back to a little bit later on as I am fairly leveled by this point and it's still, it's still taking a good bit of time and it's a very frustrating fight in my opinion. And if you don't have any of those uh, consumables for that Scarlet Rot, whew, talk about being just uh, dwindled when it comes to health. But as you'll notice, what I thought I was going to showcase, did I not? Okay, here we go, yeah. Almost thought I forgot to put it in there, but right here there's going to be a little statue where we can buy up those dragon abilities. Similar to what that island was able to produce for us, if you've already found that one over in Limgrave. Gives us the ability to buy up those uh, dragon abilities. Bit of a mouthful right there, but... That's going to be another one of those locations where we can get that done. Bit easier, or... Uh, I mean, it's... Either way, if you haven't found that island before, this is going to be your main location for buying up those dragon abilities. Now, from this location, we'll start heading along the right edge. Now, you'll notice down below us over to the right, that's going to be the spot that we're going to be heading down towards. Now, do not jump off in, uh, at any spot, apparently, because uh, I still don't even understand how that small a jump actually killed me. Just walk all the way down to the very edge of it and then circle back through it. Now, you'll notice we're out in front of Redmain Castle right now. Redmain Castle is not going to be a part of this guide. I've already got a guide for Redmain Castle. If you'd like to check that one out after watching this one or as we progress to this location right here, I'll have that link down in the description below. But like you saw before, we'll, we'll have another one of those giant chickens as well to deal with. But we got a somber smithing stone from that uh, scarab just behind us and just down here at the very edge or very end of this uh, narrow narrow path off to the left we'll have another dungeon to complete now it's going to be a fairly short dungeon and there will be a lot of scarlet rot down through here a couple more of those plants over on the left got another one of those grave or ghost glow warts more than a few of them down through here but they're going to be the lower level versions but if you're looking to upgrade a lot more of those uh, summons this is going to be a big help for uh, filling in those gaps between some of those. And we'll also be able to get another one of the summons down from inside of there, behind that illusionary wall. Now, you don't necessarily need to kill this uh, plant right here, but if you just want to make your time a little bit easier, take it out and then grab up the uh, glow boards just behind it. Now, we'll have another one on our left, another one on our right, and then just at the very back end of this is where we're going to get the boss lever. Got pretty lucky on that one. I kind of just uh, thought to myself, maybe there's possibly a, another illusionary wall in here. Hit it right on the dot. Now this guy is uh, a bit quick. He does an instant somehow like poison stun lock you. I, I don't even know what it's all about. But he's pretty squishy. Very easy to take him down. No matter what weapon you're using, more than likely you're going to be able to take that guy down fairly quickly. He just moves a bit faster than some of the other ones. But we'll get another one of those, uh, or we'll get a prawn summons out of him. Now, if we keep riding the uh, right edge down here, we'll notice, or, or you'll notice, this is going to be a tower over here on our right. We'll be able to head up on top of this. Kind of shocked I didn't actually... Uh, Check this out the first time I came through here when I was going to Castle Redmain. But up on top of here, there's going to be a chest on the right side. I believe it's got a talisman inside of it. We'll see here in a second. And precisely. Which is going to raise our attack power for the bows and arrows, I believe. And for whatever reason, you can actually uh, walk up on that next ladder to just about nothing. But... From that point, we'll start heading back down the ladder. We'll start heading over to the left side, riding that, uh, well, essentially we're going to still be riding that right edge for right now. 
Now, technically, over on our right, we're going to be passing by, but on our left is going to be another one of those golden seeds. Now, I'd already picked it up by this point, but you'll be able to stop by and uh, grab that one up for yourself. We'll have a couple of those uh, darn giant chickens over here. And then, on our right, we'll have another crystal tier to grab up. And that'll be the location on the map. Now we'll need to head over the top of this uh, Scarlet Rod Coral, and there'll be a lion just below us. If we do end up killing this lion, we will be getting another one of those somber smithing stones. And should be making pretty quick work of him with this uh, greatsword. And just in front of that, we'll have another one of those blood clots. Then I'll take a brief little detour, checking out the uh, lower area down there. And just behind him, we'll have another one of those blood clots. From the top here, you can obviously see where the uh, Radon boss fight area is going to be, but we'll head back up to our left, and as soon as we get up here, we'll need to head directly over to the left as there's going to be a Lost Grace that we'll need to grab over here. We'll grab that up and then start heading directly to the left of that as well, and there's going to be one more of the uh, merchants over here, which will have a cookbook, some uh, stone sword keys, and that's where the map is going to be for the uh, southern portion of Khalid. Goodness, losing my ability to talk here. But from that point, we'll start heading along the right path. Don't believe there was anything that was going to be over here. And sadly enough, we cannot jump on top of this uh, skull, scarlet rot coral, but on our uh, right, as you'll notice, we've already got some jars getting thrown at us. It's going to be one of those... Uh, Bigger boys up top there that are just going to be tossing that the entire time. We'll need to head on through the uh, gates over here. There's going to be one of those uh, puppy T-Rexes over here. Be able to take that down. But inside of this little shack over here on the right, you want to stop here and talk with this guy before heading into the next area because he's going to be the starting point for our Millicent quest. We'll progress through that quest line a little bit while in this guide or at least a little bit further once we get to the part two of the Caleb guide. But I'll be doing a separate video that completely enta entails the uh, entire journey through that side quest line with Millicent. But that's going to be the starting point for it, essentially. And we'll be doing a couple of the steps that pretty much get you about close to halfway through that quest line. But I'll be doing a whole other video on that one. Now, there's going to be one more item or one more Lost Grace that we'll be grabbing up for the end of this video, the part one. And this is where we'll be starting from once we get to the part two video. But that's going to be the end of the Caleb Guide Part 1. I'll have the Part 2 either coming later tonight, if not tomorrow morning. Trying to get these out as quick as possible. And we still got the uh, Limb Grave coming up in the future. And as well, as if, you, if you'd like to see some of this content live, hit that link down in the description. Follow me over at Twitch. And if you'd like to see more of this content in the future, hit that subscribe button. But on that note, hopefully this has helped you out. Hope you've enjoyed, and have a good one.